Ever wondered how some creatures in the wild seem to vanish into thin air when danger lurks? Welcome to the fascinating world of animal camouflage and hiding techniques, where invisibility is not just magic, but a matter of survival. In the wild, blending in is more than a social skill, it's a life-saving strategy. And creatures have mastered this art in ways that can only inspire awe. Let's take a walk through the animal kingdom and observe the masters of disguise. Octopuses, for example, are the ultimate chameleons of the sea. They can change not only their color, but also their texture and shape to mimic their surroundings, be it a coral reef or a rocky seabed. On land, the leaf-tailed gecko is a master of disguise. It can blend flawlessly with the bark of a tree, its body and tail mimicking the appearance of a leaf. This camouflage technique allows it to hide in plain sight, invisible to predators and prey alike. In the skies, the common snipe, a small wading bird, uses its plumage to blend with the marshy grounds, making it nearly impossible to spot from a distance. And then we have creatures like the stick insect, which takes camouflage to an extreme level. Resembling a twig, it not only looks like part of the plant it's on, but it also sways in the wind to enhance the illusion. In the frigid Arctic, the polar bear's white fur blends perfectly with the snow, making it nearly invisible while hunting seals. And in the desert, the sand-colored fennec fox seamlessly merges with its sandy surroundings to evade predators. These are just a few examples of how animals use their environment for concealment. It's a game of hide and seek, where the stakes are life and death. Camouflage is not just about blending in, it's about survival, about being a step ahead in the endless cycle of predator and prey. Invisibility, it seems, is a powerful tool in the animal kingdom. What if strength isn't your forte? How do you survive then? Well, as it turns out, in the wild, it's not always the strongest that survive, but the smartest. Let's dive into the intriguing world of smart escape strategies, where quick thinking and adaptability are the hallmarks of survival. Take, for instance, the humble octopus. When faced with a predator, it doesn't rely on brute force, but employs a clever combination of camouflage and clouding. It can change its skin color and texture to blend with the surroundings and in a pinch it releases a cloud of ink to obscure the predator's vision, making a swift getaway. Or consider the crafty gazelle, a creature far from the top of the food chain, yet one that has perfected the art of escape. When chased, gazelles perform a high jumping behavior known as stotting. This acrobatic display is not just for show. It signals to the predator that the gazelle is fit and fast, often deterring the chase before it even begins. Then there's the North American opossum, a master of deception. When threatened, it falls into a comatose-like state, exuding a foul smell that convinces predators it's a carrion. This feigned death or playing possum allows it to escape unscathed once the danger passes. And who can forget the Arctic hare? In a stark snowy landscape with few places to hide, these hares use their wit to survive. They can run at incredible speeds and change direction abruptly, zigzagging to confuse and evade their predators. Each of these examples showcases the power of wit over might. They underline that survival isn't just about physical prowess, but also about adaptability, quick thinking, and outsmarting the opponent. These animals don't win by being the strongest. They survive by being the smartest. So when you find yourself in a tough situation, remember the octopus, the gazelle, the opossum, and the hare. Take a leaf out of their books, use your wit, and you might just find a way out. After all, brains, it seems, can indeed outdo brawn. What happens when the hunted come together? Imagine a herd of wildebeests, a school of fish, or a flock of birds. Each animal, while vulnerable alone, becomes part of a formidable force when they unite. In the wild, there's power in numbers. Take a look at meerkats, for instance. They live in large families, and when a predator approaches, they huddle together. Each meerkat takes a turn to stand guard while others forage or play, ensuring the safety of the group. This collective defense strategy significantly improves their survival chances. Or consider the awe-inspiring sight of a starling murmuration. Thousands of birds move as one, creating shifting patterns in the sky. This isn't just a spectacle, it's a survival tactic. By moving together, they confuse and deter predators. Such examples are abundant in nature, reminding us that unity isn't just a human concept. It's a survival strategy used by many species. 
Unity, it appears, can be an animal's best defense. How do the swiftest survive in the wild, you may ask? In the grand theater of nature, speed is a crucial actor. It's not always the strongest or the most intelligent species that survive, but often those that are the fastest. Let's take a jaunt to the plains of Africa, where the cheetah reigns as the fastest land animal, reaching speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. This agile feline uses its speed to chase down prey before they can react, making it a formidable hunter. But speed isn't just about the chase, it's also about evasion. Consider the Thompson's gazelle, a favorite prey of the cheetah. Despite being slower with a top speed of around 50 miles per hour, their exceptional agility and ability to change direction swiftly often means they can evade their pursuers. In this game of survival, speed is a precious commodity for both predator and prey. But it's not just on land where speed plays a pivotal role. The sailfish, the fastest swimmer in the ocean, can reach speeds of up to 68 miles per hour. This speedster uses its rapid movements to herd and confuse schools of smaller fish, making for an easy meal. On the flip side, the dull's porpoise, with a top speed of 55 miles per hour, uses its speed to dart away from predators and leap out of the water, a behavior known as porpoising. In nature's aquatic arena, speed is just as vital. So whether it's the cheetah on the savanna or the sailfish in the open seas, speed is an essential tool for survival. It offers an edge in the relentless pursuit of life and the constant evasion of death. Every day these creatures push their bodies to the limit, their survival hinging on their ability to outpace their adversaries. And so in the wild, the race is not to the swift, but survival certainly is. Speed, it seems, can be the difference between life and death. What if your body could produce its own weapons? Imagine being armed with a deadly chemical arsenal right within your own cells. Sounds like a science fiction movie, doesn't it? But for some animals, it's just another day in the wild. Let's take the poison dart frog, for instance. These brightly colored critters are not just for show. Their skin secretes a lethal toxin, warding off any potential predators. Even a tiny amount can cause paralysis or even death. Talk about a lethal kiss, or consider the venomous cone snails that roam the seafloor. Their venom, delivered via a harpoon-like tooth, can be fatal to predators and unlucky humans alike. Then there's the formidable king cobra, capable of delivering a venom so potent it can kill an elephant. These animals highlight nature's incredible ingenuity in survival. They produce deadly chemicals, not for offense, but for defense. Toxicity, it appears, can be a lifesaver. What if looking dangerous was enough to keep you safe? Now that's a question that might seem a little out of place in a world where being the biggest, the strongest, or the fastest often translates to survival. But in the animal kingdom, it's a strategy that's not only valid, but incredibly effective. We're talking about mimicry, the art of survival by imitation. Picture this, you're a small, harmless creature in a world filled with predators. Your survival odds? Not so great. But what if you could trick those predators into thinking you're something far more dangerous? That's exactly what some animals do. They mimic more dangerous species to evade predators, effectively turning their perceived weakness into a strength. Take the harmless hoverfly, for instance. It bears a striking resemblance to the much more dangerous wasp. This similarity isn't accidental. It's a survival technique. Predators taking one look at the hoverfly might think twice about attempting to make a meal of it, fearing the painful sting that a wasp would deliver. Then there's the case of the hawk moth caterpillar. When threatened, it puffs up its head and thorax to resemble a snake's head, complete with faux eyes. Any would-be attackers are likely to think twice before messing with what they perceive as a venomous snake. These examples highlight the effectiveness of mimicry as a survival strategy. It's a fascinating testament to the adaptability and ingenuity of life on Earth. These creatures, rather than trying to outrun or outfight their predators, have found a way to live another day by simply appearing to be something they're not. But it's important to remember that these are not conscious decisions made by the animals. It's the result of millions of years of evolution, a testament to the power of natural selection. The animals that were best at mimicking dangerous species survived and passed on their genes, leading to the incredible mimicry we see today. Mimicry, it seems, can be a masterstroke in survival. 
So the next time you see a creature that looks dangerous, take a moment to consider. Is it actually dangerous or is it just doing a convincing job of pretending to be? What if your body was your fortress? Imagine living in a world where your survival depends not only on your wit and speed, but also on the physical defenses you carry on your person. For many animals, this is their reality. Their bodies are equipped with a variety of structures that serve as their ultimate line of defense against predators. Take the porcupine, for example. This prickly creature is covered in sharp, needle-like quills that deter any potential threats. When a predator approaches, the porcupine raises and rattles its quills in a display meant to intimidate. If the warning is ignored, the porcupine can launch these quills into the attacker, causing painful injuries. Similarly, the turtle shell is not just a mobile home, but a life-saving protective barrier. Made up of bony plates and a tough outer layer, the shell can withstand attacks from many predators. When danger lurks, the turtle can retract its vulnerable head and limbs into the safety of its shell, effectively becoming an impenetrable fortress. And then there's the armadillo, whose name in Spanish means little armored one. Its body is covered in hard, bony plates that act like a suit of armor. When threatened, some species curl up into a ball, leaving only their armored exterior exposed to predators. These examples illustrate how physical defenses play a crucial role in the survival of many species. They provide an effective deterrent against predators. Buying these creatures enough time to escape or discouraging attacks altogether, it's a testament to the incredible adaptability of life on Earth. And it's not just about spikes and shells. Some animals, like the hedgehog, combine physical defenses with behavioral strategies for added protection. When threatened, a hedgehog will curl up into a ball, presenting only its spiky exterior to the predator. This combination of physical and behavioral defenses makes the hedgehog a formidable opponent despite its small size. In the end, whether it's through spikes, shells, or other physical barriers, these animals have adapted in extraordinary ways to survive in a world filled with threats. Physical defenses, it appears, can make one invincible. What if your voice could save your life? Now that's a thought. In the wild, this is often a reality. Animals use sound as a crucial communication tool, especially when danger is lurking. Imagine you're a prairie dog. Your community relies on your keen sense of observation to alert them of approaching predators. A high-pitched bark or a series of chirps could mean the difference between life and death for your fellow prairie dogs. Or how about the deep resonant roars of a lion reverberating across the savannah? These mighty roars not only assert dominance, but also serve as warnings to other lions to steer clear of their territory. Even in the densest of forests, the distinct call of a bird can alert fellow birds of an impending threat, triggering a swift escape. Sound in these cases is far more than just noise. It's a signal, a warning, a beacon. Sound, it seems, can be a lifeline. What if fooling your enemy was your best bet for survival? In the wild, deception and trickery are often the keys to outwitting predators. Some animals are masters of this craft, using false signals or even parts of their bodies to dupe their pursuers. Take, for instance, the North American opossum. This crafty creature is known for playing dead when threatened, a tactic that often confuses predators and gives the opossum a chance to escape. Or consider the cuttlefish, a marine animal that can change its skin color and pattern to mimic its surroundings, tricking predators into thinking it's just a part of the ocean floor. And let's not forget insects like the stick bug, which resembles a twig or leaf, effectively fooling potential predators. These are just a few examples of how animals use deception to their advantage. It's a survival strategy as old as life itself, and one that continues to prove remarkably effective. Deception, it appears, can be a game changer. What if the key to survival was to keep moving? Indeed, for some species, survival is a journey, not a destination. They undertake epic migrations, traversing vast distances with an innate compass guiding their way. These are the long-distance travelers of the animal kingdom, and their journeys are nothing short of astonishing. Take the Arctic tern, for instance, a bird that flies from its Arctic breeding grounds to the Antarctic and back each year, covering a mind-boggling round trip of 44,000 miles. Or the monarch butterfly, which migrates up to 3,000 miles from North America to central Mexico to evade the harsh winter. These migrations are not just grand voyages, but strategic survival tactics. By moving, these species can evade predators, 
exploit abundant food resources and find suitable breeding grounds. It's a high stakes gamble, but one that can pay off in the ultimate currency, survival. Migration, it seems, can be a passport to survival.